Hi guys. I thought today I would um, finish off this journal. Um, um, I think I mentioned that I protected it with a uh, Mod Podge and a spray varnish because I bought, I normally have this in a gloss, but it, do, it doesn't actually finish gloss. Um, but so then I bought it, um, the matte finish because I prefer matte finish. But when I spray it, it goes, um, it goes all um, milky. It's not colorless. So I don't know if the product's faulty or not, but I think I'm going to um, buy the other one again. But anyway, I went over the top of it with um, Mod Podge and it's actually perfect. So it's doubly protected. So this is even all being sprayed, this part here. And then here has also has the Mod Podge on it. Um, so now I'm thinking, I'm just going to do a very simple closure on it. Um, I'm actually going to use the sari silk and to measure it just so we're because it is a tutorial how to do the journal what I did was I held it like this now my lefty so you'll do it the other way and I wrapped it around I want it to go to there I, I took it out like that and then I doubled it because I'm going to do it double silly fraying stuff and I left it a bit longer because I will be tying a knot so um what I'll do is I'll, I won't tie my knot until afterwards, but I'm going to stitch it here, backwards and forwards. Hopefully my sewing machine doesn't go bananas. And I do have all my pages in there, so it'll be a little bit more of a struggle. But um, I can do what I know I can. Um, so probably a step that you should do, maybe if you have an idea, um, before you stitch your pages in, you can do this step before you put the pages. Sometimes I'm just one of those people that... Um, I um I quite often I don't know I need I need to see it all together, so I'm actually going to stitch it here. I'm only I'm I'm not even going to measure. I'm just eyeballing where it should go. Um, just a second, it's tangled. Uh, so let's just have a look here. You probably can't see. I'm just going to try and zigzag it into into place a little bit longer. It'll fit under there just. My sewing machine is not going to appreciate this, but we will see what happens. And that way I can hold this up. Now, I'm a bit nervous. Could break my needle. I'm just going to backstitch a bit. No problem. Okay, it's backstitched. I think I'm going to take it out because it um, doesn't want to go back too far. It is, it is backstitched, but um, what I'm going to do is take it out and I'm going to stitch it again. Just to be sure because it's a pressure point, as I like to call it, where you're going to be tugging on it. And, uh, you know, the journal might grow a little bit. There is a bit of room, even though it doesn't seem like it, there's a bit of room for growth. So um, if you don't like the, the sari silk frame, you could take it off and put something else there like a ribbon, a ribbon that's got, you know, like an edge seam, so that wouldn't fray. But um, I like the look of the sari silk. I like things to be rusty. So I'm just going to do it again, just to be sure. I'm gonna zip, oh, there we go, backstitch even on top, and then I'm just going to go here, and that is it. That's done. How simple is that? Then, and this being cardboard, um, the sewing machine actually does go through, or mine does. A bit of, I told you, it's a bit of a workhorse, this sewing machine. It's going to conk out eventually. I've had it for quite a long time. I'm not very nice to it. It's probably going to have a hissy fit and stop working. Oh, I can't. The only thing about the sewing machine is it sticks to your fingers. Okay, so then I'm just going to tie a, like a knot here. Oh, and I left my other bits in the other room. What a silly person I am. I still had to do a couple more things. Okay, so that's that, and that's going to just wrap around twice, and then you just tuck it up because it's got a knot and it'll stay, and that's going to be the closure for it. And I like that it's in the same similar sort of colors. Am I on screen? Yes, okay. Uh, so then the one last thing I have to do is excuse you. Um, I needed to put some things, and then we'll do a quick little flip through. Okay, so this, I've got to put something in here and here. Now, where is my basket? Oh, it's all in the other room. It's all in the other room. Okay, guys, 
I'm going to leave you. I'm running into the other room. I'm back. Do I do apologize. Don't scream at me. I apologize. Okay. This is what I wanted. So, um, these are some of my old letters and book pages and things. That's super old. Um, that I printed out on tea dyed paper. I think I might include this one. And what I wanted to do was just to simply tear it. Now, if I can find my tear ruler. Yes, I can. Here it is. I'm going to tear it here. Good thing I live in an apartment. I don't have to go too far if I need to get something. And it doesn't matter how badly it's torn because it's meant to look old. I wanted to say thank you to everybody for your wonderful birthday wishes. I really worked hard yesterday. Um, I, I knew I wasn't going to come in my craft room and do anything because the whole morning was with phone calls with, you know, several all members of my family calling me, like my brother and my sister and then my mum and my dad and all that sort of thing. So um, I knew I wouldn't get much done. So I basically just caught up with the, um, answering comments on YouTube and I tried to keep up with all of the comments and birthday wishes. So thank you very much. And I'm so excited, um, you know, for those who are participating in the giveaway. I know there are a lot on. I kind of had planned this. Last year I participated in Fiona, um, Fiona J's one. I sent her a page and, um, and I thought it was such a wonderful idea. Um, and I had thought that I would do it for my birthday. And then um, there's quite a few out at the moment doing that. So I do apologize. It's quite a struggle for, you know, everybody to pass it, participate in them. But I am going to participate in most of them, I think. Um, not because I necessarily want to win the prize. I just want to send the lovely ladies something. So that's going to go in there. Uh, I could put something else in there, but I put that in there. And then I thought I've got, I, I have made um, a whole lot of um, ephemera uh, the other day um, when I was doing journals. And I think I've got some pretty Italian using my kits. We might as well stay on theme. Actually, I love this one. I think I'll include this, this tag in there. Um, even though I might have made a tag, I can't remember already with that one but I think I'll slip that one in there I think that's really pretty oh you can't even see <laughs> hello um I'll slip I get too relaxed and forget what I'm doing now why is that not slipping in there we go and that will just slip in there and leave there and so let's do a quick flip through so if you remember I hope this was helpful I think I'll do another video um making a maybe a different style journal maybe a more simple journal um, I think I'll do another video from start to finish because there's um, quite a few newbies I've noticed in the commenting um, that have, you know, what, sort of even though I did this from start to finish, you could totally follow this process of how I did it. Um, and and um, and then that's how it, and then you'll have a journal at the end of it. This is fairly simple the way it was done. Um but yeah, lots of people are like, you know, they're sort of, do I make, a, you know, a whole lot of these and a whole lot of those? And you make a whole lot of these and a whole lot of those, like as in like lots of tags and pockets and things. If, you, if you're if you making more than one journal, then it's nice. If you're having a session um, of crafting, maybe sit down and make a whole lot of tags. It's just because it streams streamlines your process a little bit. But if you're making like one journal, um, you might make... I don't know how I don't know how many tags did this take. Maybe between tags and journaling cards, ten, um, depending on how many pages and pockets you've got. And then you might make um, six different pockets and tucks, sort of thing, to put in a one signature journal. I'm not quite sure. Um, maybe you, when we do the flip through, you can count how many went in here. But um, I sort of don't. I don't actually have any rules. I just sort of do it sort of thing I'm not very helpful anyway let's flip through and um, and just remind ourselves of what happened here we had a um, this is a pocket that I made then the tag with the um, butterflies printed on the vellum I think that was and then this is from a book I just love that love that 
I put it in that way because the tones in this um, general are malt quite muted, but then you can flip it around if you want more colour. Then there was this. I just put the Florentine paper there. Super old 1700s book page. I think this one was the mid 1700s. Um, really beautiful texture. Then some of um, our digital kits here. Um, that one, that page Steffi designed. Um, just a little collage on the page. Then this is a glassine bag with um, some of our first papers. I think Steffi designed most of these. And I just came in and, you know, said do this and do that um you know like maybe i suggested to add and that's a tag um actually i had I, I subconsciously put the r there someone had noticed that i it wasn't a conscious decision there's a little tag there um yeah i was saying steffi designed most of those first papers and then i just came in and said oh maybe we could have a little bit of lace or something over there and um and that was his paper as well that one oh that was a tag i tore up as well so that one too I think he did this one too. i just love that paper Yes, it's yummy. And that's one of my original collage pages that I'd done. <coughs> Excuse me. Original book page. Um. <coughs> oh, dearie me. Um. Yeah, I feel like I might be getting a little bit of a chest infection. In the sense that I've, I'm feeling like a little bit, you know, coffee sort of thing. Anyway, um, this was Steffi mucking around with um, PNG image of one of the um, photographs that I had taken. And then... Um, I think that was one of the, um, like the embellishing elements that I created. And that's from one of my books. I just love that. These are the Alakini. Um, I think they're, oh, I might get it wrong. These are typically, um, Venetian. They were with the big masks, the Pulcinella. And then this is a beautiful, um, botanical page. And then this page is just the reverse side of it a map I put in and then this was the pocket that I wasn't sure about and we put the um, seagull in there but I called it a penguin because I'm a goose and then on the other side uh, we have this tag here and there are pockets behind but I didn't put anything in there I I kind of felt like maybe I should have probably um, stuck it right down and just had the one pocket but anyway could have something else behind it this page was actually sent to me from someone in the states but it's lovely old um, paper and it was nice a nice size that's why i liked it i didn't decorate these bags um i put this in with um savonarola who was not a very nice man but very important part of florentine history um and i love that painting that painting's in florence somewhere. i think it's in palazzo vecchio i'm not quite sure and then here and this and this journal was just working with the things that I'm that I had on my table. I didn't go into any of my drawers and get my laces or um, anything like that. Um, I was lucky that when I went to Australia, I had left all the pouch with all of these papers in, so I did have those to work with. And I did really need to work with some of them because I had lots of printouts, but you know, trying on different papers and that sort of thing. Um, this was sent to me by Joyce. Yes, Joyce. Oh no, this was a piece of old book page and that was sent to me by Joyce, the die cuts um, from Joyce Leathers. And um, and so then I just collage and I stuck that on. I think I'd cut that in half. It was a double one um, and I stuck that on so it's decorative. And it's not a pocket, it's just a place to, extra place to write there. And this is a vintage piece of book page that was sent to me in Happy Mail. And um, this is a tea dyed doily. And I just put that there. And then on this side, I put some tea dyed antique um, script. It was an old receipt from the Civil War, actually. Um, and then this is um, another one of our papers here. Some of my, um, a printout of my tea dyed paper, coffee dyed paper. And I put one of the tags there to decorate the page, which I thought was a really fun, easy way to decorate the page. This is a real piece of super old ephemera from 1922 lovely coffee dyed doily and there's actually i don't think they actually have any smell so that's good if you're opposed to coffee smell um this is some of our paper here and here i love this steffi did this and then i just got him to add no i think he might have added no i got him to add the lace i think and then we sort of mucked around with the flowers as well um and then that's the other side of the old page oh that's mine 
I thought someone had sent me that, but no, that, that, that's something that I had. Um, this is a lovely belly band with one of the tickets that I made in Tina's challenge. And then this is my, oh, that's what I want. I love that. I need to remember that. Really like how that um, turned out with that old envelope that I had scanned in. Love the writing on it. Oh dear, I think I have to make another one of these. That's one of our papers. I think I will. I've got lots of my papers printed up, so I can do that. Um, here's that window um, with the beautiful wrought iron, and I put all the flowers there like they had. Um, silly, silly, isn't it? But it's like they had got a, you know, a pot in front with the flowers on the windowsill. And then that's one of my papers there. Just a little corner pocket. And then this is the other part of the bag and that tag. I made that in one of Tina's challenge videos too. These are nice, generous bags. You can fit lots in those. And then that's just one of our papers. And then here, I oh, I put a, a belly band. I put that envelope in there because I didn't really want to stick it down because it has interesting coffee dyeing on the back. It's quite grungy, but pretty. And then this is one of my tags. I put a flower on and some paper and some netting. And then that's that pretty um, double pocket that I made. And then that's just one of the tags that I ripped up to decorate the page and so that's just from book and i add, added that to the flower um, flower book so that i could put it in straight and make it bigger um and then this is a pocket that i made one of my tags and then another um page from that book with the puccinella i don't know where that is oh where is it Oh, there's the most beautiful town in the hills up here above Varese. It's amazing. Or maybe it's this maybe it's this hill over here. I'm not sure. But oh, Steffi and I loved it. We went there just for lunch one day when we were where were we? Um oh we were coming back from somewhere and so we decided to stay the night there and um and we went it's I can't remember what it's called. Um that's the seagull and then here I've got one of those double pockets, a bigger one. And then I love that tag. Put that in there. Got this tag that kind of matches. And then a book page. Beautiful book. Look at those flowers. Aren't they wonderful? Really lovely. There's another um, from the Concise, whatever it's called. That one that I've got three of that I showed in the video the other day. Here you could continue on, collage on, and be, use that for writing. It's flower there. This is from Tina. It's episode 12. I was told that Tina did these in her mass making, number 12. Um, so this is a flip out. You can write there. Um, just a lovely one of our things. Oh, it's stuck down. Just a second. It should. Oh, it's not stuck down. I'm holding on. What a goose. I'm holding on to my flip out. That's why I couldn't lift it. There's a lovely big tag. Well, I do enjoy that tag too. I like that one. And then when you open it, you've got all these pages to write on. So you earn quite a bit of real estate there, don't you? And then I just stuck that down to decorate the page a little bit. And that's the super old page. And they're quite strong pages, these 1700s pages. Um, I've still got 1700s pages in my bundles until I run out. Because I, I did find I have another book. It's really big, like this big, that didn't have a cover and it's falling apart. So that one's now going in. Um, and with the, with the listing, um, I've written the dates. Not like with the 1800s book pages, there's actually three or four more types um, in there that I haven't written the dates down. Um, but I've written down the dates that you can see. They are definitely all in there. Plus a few more, plus several more because it's not all of them. Okay, so that's that. And then that's the last page there. And then we just did this. We've, I put in that tag, which I absolutely love. And then in my envelope here, um, love that. And I didn't want to stick it down because I decorated the back too. Um, I just put in this old letter 1779 1780 1781 and I think 82 so I, these were from the things that my mother-in-law brought over um, to me so that I could scan them that her cousin owns so yeah that's in that envelope there with this yummy um, lace now this is a vintage or antique sort of lace but it was quite white someone had blinched it bl blinched it bleached it it was a tap like at the end of a, a hemp towel and so I did put it in coffee and tea just to give it that color because I liked it more because it was stuck white they bleached it so that is the journal so I hope you enjoyed that series um 
I will do another one making a journal start to finish because it's quite fun and I don't mind sharing my process and my thoughts when I do that sort of thing. Um, you know, I won't show you how I did the Nellie Workman um, covers because that's her course. So you need to go to her shop and do her course. Um, it's I won't remember to link it because I'm hopeless, but it's the video, um, it's the book with the flowers on. It costs 40 something euros. So what, what would that be in dollars? About 48 dollars, 49 US dollars. Um, and it's got, it's a cover with, it's very frou-frou, like not frou, she's not frou-frou. Frou-frou is like more lace everywhere. She's frilly, but it's not frou-frou, if you know what I mean. It's really pretty. Um, obviously, I do my interpretation of it. Mine, I think, I consider my covers are probably more tame than Nelly. She's very, very creative. Um, but her course is wonderful if you want to learn something new. Um, so I'm not, some people have said, oh, you're going to do a tutorial with those covers. I won't because it's not my idea that's why I wouldn't do that um, I don't it really show too much with the book binding um, other than simple things because I don't consider myself an expert and I'm probably doing it wrong somehow and then I'd be telling everybody the wrong thing I would recommend if you were wanted to maybe um, you know watching other tutorials um, on YouTube and also if you wanted to really learn what I'm eventually going to do it is to do a Nick the Booksmith course I will do that one day, but it's on my bucket list. But I've got, I'm still going to do Tracy's course. I still haven't done it. Um, I haven't done her attache thing properly yet. And um, who else? I bought another course that I haven't looked at yet either. Oh, I bought, um, what's her name? House of Wren. House of Wren? Um, can't remember. Um, anyway, I have her course, to, it's a sewing course, and I haven't done that yet either, so hopeless. Anyway, I'm just wasting your time, so I'll be back soon again with another video, and I will see you again soon. Bye!